Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I extend to you a warm welcome to this webinar being hosted by the Caribbean Center for Educational Planning here at the University of the West Indies, Mona. The Caribbean Center for Educational Planning was established with a mandate of providing thought leadership and capacity building in the area of educational policy and planning in order to support regional development in the Caribbean. Today's webinar, being held under the theme, Learning from the COVID-19 pandemic, Imperatives and Opportunities for Building Resilient Education Systems, while representing a specific response to the six-month-old phenomenon called the coronavirus is more focused on the strategic issue of sustainable educational planning, the mandate of the CCEP. I welcome everyone, especially our attendees who have joined us online. And at last check, we were heading beyond 70 participants. We anticipate that before my speech, my opening comments are over, we would have exceeded 100. We have what I hope you'll find to be an insightful and informative two hours planned. Among the persons who have been committed, who have joined us to enable us to deliver that package of meaningful and insightful information, to whom I extend a very, very special welcome, are the principal of the Mona campus, Pro-Vice-Chancellor, Professor Dale Weber, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Jamaica, Dr. Grace McLean, Lead Specialist, Social Sector Department, Education Division, Inter-American Development Bank, Ms. Cynthia Hobbs, who will be our keynote speaker, Program Specialist for Education at UNESCO Caribbean Office, Dr. Farrell Khan, Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Examinations Council, Dr. Wayne Wesley, and countless other, well, not quite countless, several other <laughs> educational organization and developmental support entities represented, represented all of whom will be uh, introduced more specifically later. We also have here, to whom I extend great thanks, members of the CCEP operations team. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a strain on every sector of human society, and the Caribbean, as a vulnerable region, is likely to be reeling from its effects for a long time to come. Regions such as ours are vulnerable to shocks, and prior to COVID-19, there were issues placing strain on and posing challenges for our education system. COVID-19 has simply placed a greater strain on these systems. It is our hope that coming out of this webinar, there will be ideas and insights to respond to and arise from the challenges posed by the pandemic. But we also hope that in responding to these challenges, we will be positioning our education system to combat other challenges which may be on the horizon. With that, I wish to hand over to Professor Weber, who will bring his opening remarks, after which we'll hear from Dr. Farrell Khan. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Thompson. Dr. Dr. Thompson, Thompson, head, head of, of the CCCP, Dr. 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 Tyrell Khan, Mr. Cynthia Hobbs, Hobbs Permanent, Permanent Secretary, Secretary Dr. McLean, the wide range of ably talented cadre of persons I've seen in both panel one and panel two for today's webinar, and the moderators, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I'm pleased to have been asked to bring greetings on behalf of the University of the West Indies Mona campus. The importance of planning and evaluation in providing our students with a quality learning experience can never be understated. And this webinar is going to be a door opening exercise 
as we contemplate where we are and where we want to go. The passion that we have for sharing knowledge must be appropriately channeled if we are to adequately serve our students and our region. Planning and evaluation enables us to critically assess where we're coming from so that we can articulate the linkages and where we want to go. This webinar, like many other fora put on today by the Caribbean Center for Educational Planning, affords us an occasion to examine our unique circumstances and collectively focus on our solutions. Today, we have an opportunity to contemplate our circumstances in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 has altered life as we know it, has altered educators across the region, and we have all gone to previously unimaginable lengths to now continue engaging students teaching and learning. Amidst the reports of challenges that have touched us, we also have amazing stories of adaptation, evolution within our education system. This is a mark of resilience. The mission of education sector today is to continue the transformation in the midst of many unique changes wrought by this pandemic. We must seek to transform how we teach, what we teach, and where we teach so that students can fully be prepared and can operate in this digitized society. I remember when the Mona campus suspended classes. It took us four weeks to get our faculty and students in a place where we could continue that delivery. Even as an educator, I recognize that there is a big difference between online teaching and learning and emergency remote teaching and learning, and we strive to close the gap. We thank entities that have worked with us to help us in that exercise, and I wish this webinar was available when we were making the transition, but nothing before its time. This pandemic has highlighted severe gaps in our education system, and if we are to truly recover from this pandemic, and we will, we must move to close these gaps. I'm therefore very confident that this webinar will put us in a place where we can share our stories, we can share our experiences, our challenges, our successes, and how we have done various bits of overcoming so that we can rise to the challenge. It is only through collaborating that we'll be strong enough to be able to overcome and look forward to the next pandemic. I wish to commend the center, the team led by Dr. Thompson, which has worked to put this webinar together. I would like to thank all the presenters, all the moderators, the panelists. Many of them are friends I have not seen in a long time, but I will wait to see what they look like now. People like Chris I haven't seen in ages and Wayne, who I saw just last month, but I'd love to hear their views on some of what we're gonna discuss. This event will go a long way in ensuring that we continue to be educators and educators on the move, resilient to change. I thank you and look forward to a fantastic webinar experience. Good morning. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. Um, Principal of the Mona Campus, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Dale Weber, Dr. Knut Thompson, Head of the Caribbean Center for Educational Planning, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education Jamaica, Dr. Grace McLean, distinguished panelists and participants, and members of the CCEP operations team. Good morning to all of you. UNESCO has a long-standing partnership with the Caribbean Center, and we are honored to be part of this timely initiative today. COVID-19 pandemic is putting education progress at risk globally through two major shocks. First, the near universal closing of schools uh, at all levels, which could lead to learning loss, increased dropouts, and higher inequality. And secondly, the potential economic recession sparked by the pandemic control measures. The combined impact of school closures and economic hardship could push millions of vulnerable children out of education and reverse decades of hard-won gains. About 1.7 million learners and over 91,000 teachers are affected by the health pandemic in the cluster of the Caribbean member states and associated member states. 
countries in the Caribbean have responded with tremendous agility to establish more resilient education systems. They are concerted efforts to reopen schools, strengthen capacity for distance learning, to prepare for future COVID outbreaks or other emergencies, and training teachers in remote teaching and learning methods, including for learners with disabilities and in technical and vocational education. It is important to acknowledge that the current crisis will have long lasting consequences for education systems in terms of access, quality, equity and management, which are likely to persist beyond the pandemic. So what are some important questions we should be asking today? What are the implications of this crisis for educational planning? How can we channelize this unprecedented mobilization of energy, creativity and innovation to bring about lasting change in education? How can we reimagine education and build back resilient education systems? Risks of disasters, conflict and violence are becoming more frequent, pointing towards increased need to strengthen risk reduction capacities in the education sectors, including through prevention, preparedness and mitigation activities. UNESCO advocates for rapid response efforts to be underpinned by a mid and longer term multi-risk and sustainability oriented approach for educational planning. Emergencies and school closures have longer term consequences, especially for the most vulnerable and marginalized, magnifying existing uh, disparities within education systems. So we need to plan with attention to equity it is essential for us to take into consideration the risks of exacerbating disparities and there are already lessons from the global COVID-19 crisis. Firstly, we need to tackle the digital divide. It is imperative for us to tackle this digital divide as we move forward. Education planners need to consider issues related to access, teacher preparedness and school family communication. The public and private partnerships could help ensure that all students have access to information technology or to radio and television modalities that are relevant in some contexts. Teacher training needs to use digital learning management systems and online learning pedagogy before the crises. It is essential to transition to an online learning modality during a time of crisis. So for, teachers are finding themselves in uncharted territory. Therefore, we might need a brief live streamed training session to enable them to cope better with this current situation. Establishing communication lines between teachers and parents before crises and maintaining them as children learn from home is also key to support the most uh, at-risk children. Also, we need to secondly, planned for inclusive learning solutions. Education authorities must take special care in planning for the diverse needs of all learners during the school closures. This is paramount for students with learning disabilities who may struggle to work autonomously and at a distance. It may be desirable to maintain minimum opportunities for classroom learning with small groups of special needs learners. Educational planning and management are instrumental in the response to the pandemic. UNESCO is leading numerous joint activities and the UNESCO International Institute of Educational Planning has specific initiatives to COVID-19, including crisis sensitive educational planning. The response to build resilience in education systems is articulated around four main axes. Firstly, supporting the global community of practice of educational planners and managers through online learning forums. We also need to offer webinars and we are offering new training courses that recognize the protracted nature of this and other crises. And IIEP, UNESCO, the International Institute of Educational Planning has initiated some new courses that help education systems build resilience. Uh, 
UNESCO and IIEP are also preparing guidelines uh, and mobilizing resources on different aspects of educational planning and management and providing technical support to member states in response to the COVID-19 crisis. The UNESCO Kingston office, which covers the Caribbean cluster of 20 countries, is ready to provide rapid remote technical support to countries to build resilient education systems. The UNESCO Kingston office works closely in close collaboration with IIEP, UNESCO Institute of Statistics, because data is central to inform decisions to build resilient education systems. And we also work with partners such as CARICOM, the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, World Bank, UNICEF, ID, uh, B, IDB, and others. So thank you very much for this dialogue today and for this opportunity to participate in this learning opportunity. And we hope we will all have an opportunity to go back and strengthen our work in education. Thank you very much.